Hi everyone, Brock here for Talking Toys, and I just wanted to welcome you to our new segment, Favorite Fads, where I will show you guys the history and stories about the popular toy fads that have impacted the toy industry and our culture from the past to the present. We will tell the story of how these toy fads became popular, why they were so in demand, and why some fads became treasures or trash. In our first episode, we explore the Beanie Baby fad of the 1990s, and what became of it. Beanie Babies were invented by businessman H. Ty Warner who founded the toy company Ty Inc. in 1986. Warner created the first Beanie Baby in 1993 for children to buy a decent toy that was under $5. Beanie Babies were similar to stuffed animals but were smaller and were similar to a bean bag filled partially with plastic pellets instead of being a stiff plush toy stuffed with cotton. Warner tried finding stores to sell the predecessor to Beanie Babies, Himalayan Cats. The new plush toy concept was often turned down by others, saying the animals looked deflated and like roadkill. In the 1992 Atlanta Toy Fair, Warner sold 30,000 units, but wanted to diversify and create a collectability to his product to drive up demand. The first nine Beanie Babies were created in Chicago in 1994, and they were Spot the Dog, Squealer the Pig, Patty the Platypus, Cubby the Bear, Chocolate the Moose, Pincers the Lobster, Splash the Killer Whale, Legs the Frog, and Splash the Dolphin. In the first year, 50 different Beanie Babies were made, and the success of the 90s Beanie Baby craze and collectability was due to Warner's smart marketing techniques at the time. One of his tactics was not only creating a demand, but a reason for it as well, as only selling Beanie Babies exclusively to small businesses, gift shops, and specialty stores, and not to big retailers such as Walmart and Toys R Us, giving his product a level of quality and class. He created the collectability of his product, making it artificially rare by halting production, retiring animals, and only distributing 36 of every animal type to each seller. Warner never advertised his product on television, but did so through customer word of mouth. During that time, the internet was new and people could use it to individualize their Beanie Baby online and give it a name, birthday, and personality. The internet also became a tool for people to resell and buy more Beanie Babies on the secondary market. The collectability of Beanie Babies was so popular, people coined the term for the fad as Beanie Mania. Collectors and enthusiasts of Beanie Babies would buy up stores inventory, sometimes buying 50 at a time, creating mob scenes at small stores. Adult fans of the popular toy thought they could send their kid to college or retire on selling Beanie Babies. The demand was so high for adults, kids were unable to find them in many locations. By 1995, the company made $38 million, and by 1997, $500 million a year. Later, they earned $1.4 billion, with a USA Today poll indicating that 64% of Americans owned at least one Beanie Baby in 1998. With its popularity at its peak, McDonald's started selling smaller Beanie Babies named Teeny Beanie Babies in Happy Meals to capitalize on the trend. This caused five weeks worth of inventory at McDonald's to be gone in one week, resulting in one in three Americans owning a Teeny Beanie Baby. The craze was so intense that counterfeits were being made and people were getting into fights over them. Collectors at the time were selling them online and in trade shows as well as making pricing catalogs to determine the worth of each animal and the market. Some of the most valuable Beanie Babies are the Large Wallace and his squad, worth $600,000, Princess the Bear commemorating the death of Princess Diana, worth $500,000, Lefty the Donkey and Righty the Elephant, $50,000, and Valentino the Bear, worth $42,300. The Beanie Mania fad started its decline when Warner announced the end of the production of Beanie Babies at the end of 1999, with a black bear named The End, being the last one at the time. This did not cause the value of the Beanie Babies prices to inflate. The decline in value started due to everybody collecting the same toy, but also the decline of popularity as kids moved their interests to Furbies and Pokemon cards. Many collectors were stuck with a surplus of Beanie Babies with no demand and not worth what they paid. Warner sales fell 90% in the early 2000s, and in 2004 had more than $39 million in losses. And in 2004, a redesign of the product was created called Beanie Booze. The Beanie Babies fad was one of the biggest ones in America that went from extreme highs to crashing lows and shows how fast the toy market can change practically overnight. I hope you enjoyed this new segment to the channel called Favorite Fads. You can also find us on Facebook for any news and updates. What do you remember about Beanie Babies? Were you a collector? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Brock, and may your toy hunts never come up empty.